Hello, welcome back to the Baking Cast, episode 4. I'm your main host, Ethan Jennings, aka Bacon, and here's your co host, Kenny Owana. And today, our first topic is an oldie but a goodie it's Doctor Strange, because I like that movie a lot. It's very old at this point, I don't know when it was released, I can look into it, but it is a very good movie because of the cinematics and the camera movements, all of the shots and angles and the mind-bending illusions and just all of that. Like, I, I cannot be joking when I say that the cinematography for that movie is, like, beautiful because not only are the the camera shots just amazing like the positions and the mind bending different flips and tricks that the camera does all throughout the movie it's also the the special effects and such because i had watched every marvel movie before that one that it came out and i was like oh this is pretty good these marvel movies are good you know they have dc beat by a mile and as soon as Doctor Strange came out, I was like, yeah, it's over for DC. They don't stand a chance. Because of all of the VFX, it's just beautiful. Because one moment, the whole world is normal. Then the second moment, all the walls are bending downwards and the buildings are collapsing and folding into each other. And all the scaffolding is flipping around. And that is what I like to see in a movie. Things that could quite possibly give me a seizure. How do you feel about this, Kenny? Um, I definitely agree. Seizures are swag. <laughs> for for um controversial reasons. That was that was a good Um <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that um in my opinion, Doctor Strange was definitely one of the best movies. Definitely one of the best movies that they that the MC has released. Um, so what I watched, like and so in my opinion my favorite movie would actually be, um, it would actually be, what's it called? Uh, yes, it would be Avengers Age of Ultron. That's my favorite movie. It's not gonna be Endgame. It's not gonna be, you know, there's even Doctor Strange. That, that is a great movie, but me personally, my favorite movie was Age of Ultron. But, like, when I think about, you know, the way you just made me think about Doctor Strange, Ethan kind of made me look at it from a different perspective because I never really thought about like how hard making that movie would have actually been and it's like whoa because I was like you know it's just a movie about you know it's magic I'm like we've seen this before but it never really dawned on me how they really let us you know visually like how they visually captured the essence of magic and they did a great job with that so I, I mean I think it was probably yeah, it was probably one of the best movies that the MCU was released, and um, I definitely liked it a lot, but I did wish I could have seen it in theaters. I was watching it the other night, and it only then it had it dawned on me how amazing that movie was. Like, I... <laughs> Here's the thing. Marvel movies, since it's um all fiction, and, you know, it really relies on all of those video effects and such, and all of that... If you don't have really good video effects and post-processing and such, then the movie won't look as good as if it did. Obviously, I mean, this is a no-brainer, but, you know, these are things that you really don't think about much, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're really just watching a superhero movie. But Marvel put so much detail into this, and I want to say that this is probably one of the most amazing marvel movies out there in terms of video effects because um even i'm not even gonna lie if you compare uh if you compare doctor strange with something like black panther obviously in the video effects department black panther can't even keep up like i i really like black panther i love that movie they made a bunch of money off of it i can't even lie but it's like, I don't know. With Black Panther, I'm going to tell everyone this straightforward. I can't even lie. There was a lack of detail in it. The cinematography for that movie was great. And, like, it's just the, 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 the video effects, the VFX, they just weren't as good as 
they could have been like it was a great movie the camera work was like phenomenal especially the part where you had killmonger standing above that hole in the thing that led down to all the trains and then t'challa came over and jumped and pushed him over off of the thing that that camera work was beautiful because you have it turning and flipping as they fight as they're literally falling down this chasm into the depths of this train track oblivion you know like that camera work was mm, mwah, the best i cannot lie to you it was the best but yes. the video effects just weren't as good as they could have been if they had done a little bit better it would have been oh so beautiful and i just i want to say that there is nothing at this point in time that's been out that can compare in my opinion to how you have doctor strange and they went to the mirror dimension and literally all of the buildings in new york just started to flip down like a foldable children's book and everything was flipping over itself and it's like if somebody took the earth and just folded it in half so many times and made origami out of it that was insane i don't know how they did that and it's beautiful because it's hd as well it's not like they use any gimmicks that made the quality lower than it should have been it was like high definition and everything had a bunch of detail and it just seemed so real you know and then i'm not even i haven't even talked about the. Uh, the part where Stephen Strange he goes to uh Comitage. he's like I I don't remember I haven't seen this in a while but he sits down in the chair and what's her name uh he did the ball oh, lady yes, yes, yes the ancient one and um are you gonna talk about when he when she pushed him out of him, himself oh yeah I wasn't gonna talk about that but I was also gonna talk about when he sat down and she was like she was like, open your eyes, and then she she sent him flying through the galaxy. That's probably one of my favorite moments in the movie. It was so clean, too, and, like, they, hey, yo, now that, you know, like, you're really talking about it, because me, I was just, like, I don't remember too, too much about the movie, because I never, I didn't really, like, look at it that way, like, like, it was some spectacular cinema, you know, cinema, like, like a really really great movie i didn't ever think about it like that but now that you have me thinking about it like e even just the transition between something of that essence like literally pushing someone out of them and then you know having green screen up so perfectly that in itself like that really tells me that they did a great job and i feel like i never really you know like like thought about it like that yeah like uh I hadn't, I've, the first time I saw that movie, I was like, oh, this is pretty good, and, you know, I didn't really recognize it for what it really was, and, like, the second time I saw it, I was like, wow, I can't believe I saw this before, this is, like, beautiful, like, even the part at the end, if you haven't seen this movie, I'm sorry, you should have seen it by now, we're gonna spoil it, it is what it is, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, at the part at the end, where he went to, uh, Dormammu, and, he jumped down he was like Dormammu I can't I come to bargain and he kept getting killed over and over again in an endless time loop all of the video effects were beautiful like the they crafted an entire world just for this one scene and it was just beautiful like I like it sounds weird to say this but it was beautiful seeing him die over and over in different ways because you see not only because it's no, it's not even really Dormammu interacting with him well no it really is but at the same time it's like the world itself interacting with strange in order to make him cease existence and it's like crazy yeah it is pretty crazy it's like like when you like like I said when you kind of like, like open your eyes and think about it from that perspective it's like, whoa like like dang this 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 show not show this movie might have been better than i thought it was you know like like i feel like dr strange is definitely one of those movies that are very underrated you know and like not appreciated enough but yeah 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 like i was um i don't understand how 
this like this movie was hyped up when it was released a little bit but it didn't really get the recognition it deserved because it was like insane like all of the work that went into it was the the people who made this were geniuses every single person i don't care who it was even the even the background people the background uh actors you you're all geniuses i love you all because you know it just makes it a more immersive experience you know i don't i don't think there's been another marvel movie where you've seen the world have interactions with the main character this hard because in other marvel movies you know it's normally bad guy beats up hero and then hero beats up bad guy but now you've got the bad guy and the hero literally using the universe around them to try to destroy each other so they're not even making contact with each other and hitting each other it's like they're just like folding things and flipping things to and changing your perception of things in order to destroy the other person and it's really cool you know because you don't see this type of interaction in any other marvel movie except for this one i mean yeah unless you're counting that really cool scene in um infinity war where thanos took the moon of a planet and literally broke it to pieces and turned them into yeah. meteors that was actually cool oh so that is definitely i i've got to say that's one of my top like moments one of them of course of course like if if you're a marvel fan and you say this isn't your top moment then you're lying like there is no justification because it's a lie cat picking up mjolnir in um endgame is quite literally the greatest moment in all of the mcu and like i said if you think that that's wrong then you you shouldn't even claim to be a marvel fan because there were just so many other aspects that made it so, like, so, like, oh my goodness. First of all, you had, um, Thor and Iron Man and Cap, now if I'm really thinking about it, all three of them getting their butts handed to them. So that is already a, like, like a kind of setting that place's tension because you don't want the, be the good guys to lose unless your morals are out of place um and <laughs> and then you have thor about to be killed and when you see that hammer lift up if you've been you know following the the, the marvel like the marvel storyline and e even like i said in my favorite movie age of ultron in that um when when thor was uh playing a game at the party and the end he said who can pick up my hammer and cap like moved it a little bit you could see like the fear in his face because he's like oh my god he might be able to wield it so exactly. all of things like that that foreshadowing that you know like just the cultivation of a single plot you know when you've been around that long it, it hits complete if you will and those are those moments in the mcu that just slaps so hard and i'm not saying that endgame was my favorite movie you know it was a great movie like and i say this all the time even though I discredit the DC Universe a lot, low-key shout-out to them, um, the Snyder's Cut, Justice League Snyder's Cut, and Avengers Endgame were probably one of, like, the most cinematic experiences that this, this world has ever had. Like, just that good. To me, at least. So, you know, like, those types of scenes are just so cool, you know, to, like, actually watch that and, like, take part in. And you know like i was i was just thinking about that yeah uh, like like you said when you see uh the marvel lore because that's the thing that dc really lacks that marvel the the bigger department that marvel wins in it's like the lore because something that happens in the dc in a dc movie could just not matter in the next movie and or it could happen and then it could just be instantly undone in the next movie. Like how Batman literally yeah. killed the strongest man on Earth. And then he just brought him back like instantly in the next movie. You know, like it didn't matter. Like yeah. they, they just act like that. The Everything that happened in that last movie didn't matter at all. And I was like, oh, okay then. Yeah. Yeah, see, DC, that's why they, they, they lack. I mean... Hey, anybody from DC, if you're listening, take notes. 
it's it's more <laughs> it's not just about like the story you know i'm sorry i meant the opposite it's not just about the powers and like you know the superheroes it's about the story it's about the bond it's about you know how they got together the avengers have such like a such a strong bond and like such a long story of being together that if you've been around and literally watched all the all the movies dating back to i don't even know how long if you've been around keeping up with that story it feels like you're a part of them yeah and it and feels like when you know those amazing and then there's a new character that comes all of those things like they just make you feel like you're a part of them and that's why the story is just as important as any visual um any visual you know aspect yeah because marvel has marvel realized that marvel and stan lee at least they realized that they wanted to tell a story through cinematography because they're here to tell a story and they've converted their comics into a movie but dc is trying to take a comic and keep it as a comic but in video format you know what i mean like they're still stuck in the whole Ooh, superhero good, bad guy bad, bang bang pow, superhero win. You know, like, yeah. yeah. So, it's like the same as a comic as well, because something that happens in one comic doesn't matter in the next, or unless it's like a, um, a story let out comic with different issues, then at the end it's resolved. You know that makes sense. But yeah, either yeah. way. Either way, it's all going to be the same, and I just wanted to point out the amazing cinematography and VFX for Doctor Strange, and I'm absolutely sure that the Multiverse of Madness is going to be even better with its cinematography. Sir. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be so good. I literally can't wait. And I was thinking about like saying something like earlier because you were like, yeah, Doctor Strange was so good. This, that, this, that. And I was like, bro, if you think Doctor Strange is good, wait for the Multiverse of Madness. They got my girl Wanda in there. Like, just just Wanda and Strange together is already a force to be reckoned with, and I literally can't wait. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just like, that's the thing that makes Doctor Strange special. Like, the way that the universe just, like, changes and folds over itself and, like, it's just so mind-bending and like the illusions are insane so imagine not only doctor strange but doctor strange and the multiverse of madness like that just sounds insane yeah but uh yeah either way i think that it's gonna be good and it is high time we move on to our second topic of this podcast which will be brought to you by Kenny. Yes, sir. So today I got, um, I was thinking about something from, um, from a lesson that I was learning about today. I mean, I was very, very intrigued to say the least. So, um, I'm, I'm sure you're, um, familiar with what hacking is. I think we, both part partook in part, part whoa partook in some of that um i'm sure you know you're not a stranger to it but i learned what it really means to be a hacker and how there are tons of different hackers that all hackers were bad but um actually they're not so this topic is a little bit um educational if you will um so i learned today that there are uh, two type two main types of hackers they're ethical hackers and non-ethical hackers so ethical hackers are you know the hackers that hack for good and those types of hackers can be classified as white hat hackers and the reason that, that like this information well not information but this topic was valuable enough to bring to a podcast was because i really like the idea of like just you know being like like a hat like i feel like like that's really really cool it's, it's almost like no not almost like i feel like it is a gang it's like an like an electronic gang 
so there are white hat hack white hat hackers who um they they hack for good so they would like hack into your system to show you like hey this system is trash you need to fix it and then there are black hat hackers you know i think you can kind of think like oh black like that sounds kind of dark and bad yeah they're bad hackers so they would hack you know for credit card information scams some something bad like that and then of course there's for the last one there's gray hat hackers um as you can tell gray is um a mixture of both black and white so they hack not they hack for good but sometimes um white hat uh, i'm sorry gray hat hackers also you know um exploit this like exploit the hack or the window and say hey i did this for you and you didn't know it so now you're going to pay me so that's how they do things and gray hat hacking is actually really cool which doesn't really make sense to me because gray hat hackers are like apparently they're just as bad as black hat hackers but you know at least they have a sense of morality where they're doing it to help out so i don't know why it's illegal because at the end of the day you know they're still helping you but who knows so um yeah so that so that's how you can classify as a hacker and how some hackers are good and some hackers are bad um ethan out of all the hacking that you've done like what do you what do you think is what do you what do, what would you think you are <laughs> okay i think that well legally i can't say that i'm a white hat i have to cuz logically i'm a gray hat hacker which is insane but you know thinking logically gray hat hackers aren't only uh they're not only good and bad people have this sense where they think that they're only good and bad essentially gray hat hackers they do whatever is best for them at the moment because think about it i can go and i can you know hack something or exploit something and then somebody might go like oh you're really bad that doesn't mean that I want it to have to do it. Maybe there's a reason I have to do it. Or maybe I did something good. And, you know, the way that I did it was still bad. That would kind of... That would be a white hat move. But at the same time, I would still be a gray hat. Because, you know, like you said, it's all about the interests at the moment. You know... So, gray hat hackers, they're a blend of both. It's whatever they're interested in or whatever appeals to them the most. Because, you know, we all have morals and the different types of hackers, they have morals as well. Whether they're, they have a good sense of morality or a bad sense of morality or a so-so in between. You're always going to have the type of person that is so-so in between, but changes, you know... That's like that's the point of so in between, which is gray hat. You know, you can change whenever you want, and most gray hats are really either somebody that was a white hat hacker that said, "Man, I'm tired of this. I need a little money because I'm broke or whatever. I'm about to, I'm behind on rent. You know what I mean?" And they kind of exploit something, or you would have a black hat hacker that was doing a bunch of bad stuff and then maybe they got found out and charged thrown in prison or whatever and then an organization or the government said oh well you know what we can hire you because you're very good at this so you know it would be a waste to you know leave you behind and waste all of that talent and they hire you technically that would mean that you're a white hacker a white hat hacker but you're not uh it's not your quote-unquote best interest in mind so at heart, you would be a gray hat hacker, if you know what I mean. If all of this isn't nonsensical stuff. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I didn't actually think about, like, gray hats like that. I just kind of thought of them as just, like, people who did good, but, like, like, like in a bad way. You know, but I, I never really thought of them as having kind of, like, um, like not not a morality, um, well, to, to a degree, a morality crisis where they do things 
you know, like I never thought of it like that. They just do it if they're interested in it. Like that was really crazy to me. But it makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Yeah, and the different terms for different hackers, I think that it's really odd because, you know, you're basing a hacker off of the different types of things that you that they do and uh I just find it kind of insane cuz I can go and do something bad once and then go back and do a million good things would that still make me a gray hat person such and such you know if I'm not you know off of the term of like if they were gray hat people if they were white gray and black hat people instead of you know hackers for instance and I did something bad once but I was most of the time I was good would that make me a gray hat or would that make me a white hat you see it's all about everybody else's standards of morality because obviously not everyone has the same standards I can say that oh well doing this is bad and then someone else can say no it's fine it's not that bad and someone else can say oh yeah actually doing this is good so you see where it all conflicts so how do you really classify somebody as something specific i mean obviously some things are just bad and some things are just good like there's no dodging it like you know if i were to walk up to a child and just like kick it then that would be bad (laughs) but oh wow you know like that would be bad you know but if i were to go and donate money to a good organization that would be good you know but there's some things that are in the weird area where people are they have their own opinions on it you know because there's some things that are very bad that happened in history especially and people have their different opinions on it saying oh well this is good because such and such and this is bad because such and such and then people start to argue especially over social media and uh yeah so uh branching them both together you've got doctor strange and hacking i think that both of these have to do with technological advancements because that's what we talk about here you know technological advancements and trends doctor strange is a pretty old movie at this point in time it was released a while ago yeah doctor strange came out in 2006 i mean i guess yeah it came out quite a while ago but you know doctor strange was ahead of its time 2016 uh video effects that looked like 2021 to be honest that was amazing and yeah. then then you've got you know hacking ethical and ethical and in between black white and gray you know like i said you can't really choose you can't really just say something's uh one thing when in someone else's opinion it's another but you know that's when we that's the that's the thing you know that's the conversation i can talk about this all day but we'll never really get down to the base of it because like i said everyone has a different opinion about it and it's irony in its purest form because it would be an infinite conversation quite literally and this cannot be an infinite podcast so i'm sorry but uh yeah share your thoughts about that in the comments of wherever you're getting this podcast except for youtube because we don't like youtube we dislike it i'm just kidding please share your stuff that was a joke that please uh yeah so like this podcast wherever you're finding it and share it to friends and families force your people to watch it because they will like it i promise and if they don't then you will not be reimbursed i promise you that (laughs) all right well with that said thank you so much for watching th- or listening appreciate you all coming out or do peace out